So when we have a question about how to abstain from thoughts, we need to be additionally specific and really pinpoint that what we're trying to do is to abstain from thoughts we don't want, presumably, either because they are too repetitive and distracting or because what's contained in those thoughts is disturbing. Okay, this is important because it gives us two answers to the questions that are highly divergent. One answer to the question of how to abstain from intrusive thoughts, you know, thoughts that we're addicted to, is if those thoughts are merely on loop all the time and we can't stop them, but the thoughts themselves aren't particularly disturbing. So think about a song you can't get out of your head or you keep recounting some event, but the event itself isn't very disturbing. It's just intrusive because it's there. Well, in that case, the data really point to trying to anchor your thoughts to some external stimulus. So getting into action, getting into activities that really draw your attention away from that thought. Now you may still hear it scrolling in the background. So you might be sitting in class still hearing that loop of thoughts in the background. That's something that over time ought to wane, it ought to disappear. If we try and bring more and more attention to whatever it is that's in our environment, whatever it is that we happen to be learning or doing physically, et cetera. Things like mindful meditation, doing a 10 or even just five minute a day practice of sitting with eyes closed or lying down with eyes closed and really focusing on one's breath, focusing one's attention on the, sometimes it's called the third eye center, but in science we'd say the, just the region right behind the forehead, you're directing your attention there. So what you're really trying to do is learn how to focus better on one thing. And by focusing on that one thing, you focus off these repetitive thoughts. The issue isn't just thoughts that are intrusive because they're there and on repeat, but because the thoughts themselves are actually troubling. This could be recounting a trauma, someone harmed you, you observed something that was disturbing, um, you felt wronged, um, you felt someone else was wronged, um, you can't seem to get your mind off of something and your emotions tend to follow, and so it's uncomfortable. In that case, the approach is very different. What we know from essentially all of the quality scientific and clinical studies is that those sorts of intrusive thoughts are very much like a trauma, an event or something that fundamentally changes the way that your nervous system works such that you function less adaptively going forward from that event, okay? So not every bad occurrence in your life is a trauma. That's good news. The bad news is many people have traumas and traumas change the way that our nervous system works so that we don't function as well as we could. So in that sense, intrusive thoughts that are disturbing are in many ways traumas and are reinforcing that trauma. Now we know that almost counterintuitively, in order to deal with trauma, you have to get very close to that trauma. You don't have to re-expose, and I would hope you would not re-expose yourself to the very same trauma, but we know that one of the best ways to deal with traumas is to get very clear about the narrative around those traumas. Now this can be done with a therapist, ideally, but not everyone has access to therapy or can afford therapy. There's a range of quality of therapists for that matter. So we're always referring to the desire for people to do great therapy with really great, meaning excellently trained people. But it turns out that if you want to extinguish an intrusive thought, one of the best ways to do that is to journal about that particular thought extensively. So rather than the earlier strategy for intrusive thoughts where they're just on loop and intrusive because they're on loop and present, but their content isn't disturbing, when a thought is disturbing and intrusive, we know that it's very useful to script out as much detail about that particular thought and the things around it as possible. Obviously you wanna do this in a way that is fairly structured. So you ideally would use complete sentences so the reason for doing that is that thoughts, as I mentioned earlier, can often be fragmentary. So they, they pop up in our mind almost kind of we seemingly spontaneously. They're, they're inhibiting our ability to focus or be present to work or family or other things or sleep. Writing things down in a lot of detail does seem to have this quality of both reducing the emotional load of whatever it is that that thought is about as well as diminishing the frequency of those intrusive thoughts over time. 
people often achieve tremendous relief in a fairly short amount of time. Sometimes just in one session of writing it down, sometimes they need to write it down multiple times. What you're essentially trying to do with a intrusive thought or a trauma of any kind is you're trying to turn a disturbing story, that is a story that evokes a lot of emotion and captures, it kind of hijacks your nervous system into what is essentially a known but repetitive and kind of old boring story where the emotional load has been depleted. And there, of course, I have to highlight the fact that getting sufficient rapid eye movement sleep, we also know is very important for removing the emotional load of traumatic experiences and intrusive thoughts. So you really wanna to strive to get the best possible sleep you can that includes sufficient rapid eye movement sleep. So in order to remove intrusive and addictive thoughts, ask yourself, is this OCD of the classic sense? If it is, you should see a psychiatrist. They won't necessarily prescribe medication, but there are tools for true OCD that, that are very effective in many cases. You wanna ask yourself, are the thoughts disturbing or merely intrusive and repetitive? If they're merely intrusive and repetitive, well then learning to focus your attention on other things and getting better at focusing on single things through an exercise like mindfulness meditation can really help. And indeed, the, perhaps the best use of mindfulness meditation is to improve your level of focus. It does have other benefits as well, but that's going to be the major one that one will experience, even with these very short five or 10 minute a day meditations. Great data on that from the scientific literature. And then if those intrusive thoughts are not only intrusive, but they're also disturbing, in that case, you really want to put as much structure and thought, believe it or not, into what those thoughts are really about. Write them out on paper in complete sentences and maybe do that multiple times until the underlying emotions related to those thoughts really start to diminish. And by doing that, you're essentially doing your own form of trauma therapy, for lack of a better way to put it. And again, the data really point to the fact that getting close to the specific details around those intrusive thoughts is going to be the best way to extinguish them.